executive order and other budgetary control moves can help us to address between 100 and $150 million of this gap. Um, since the budget is currently under deliberations in the Senate, other measures that can be undertaken to address the challenge before us will require close collaboration with the legislature. Clearly, the size and scope of the gap that has emerged before us may require us to consider the rainy day fund. But it is up to the legislature and the executive to pursue this course of action in collaboration as we move forward to resolve the problem together. So with that, I'll close. And Rich, you want to join me up here sure. and take some questions? Is there any, poss is there any possibility of deferring the uh, tax refunds owed to Ohio taxpayers that are still owed a refund? Would that help you know, uh, address the current 09 budget gap and defer it to after July? Uh, no, that's not really practical. Uh, first of all, uh, a large number of people who are entitled to refunds file early, as we encourage them to. Uh, and those are the people that tend to file in February and in March. And those refunds, of course, have been paid already. Um, so we're, we're pretty current on refunds. There's, I mean, there's, that's really not a solution. It's a simple answer. What, what is the exact amount of the rainy day fund and what are the implications for the next two year budget if you use any or all of that um i think the exact amount of the rainy day fund is david is it 942 million dollars and the implications if you use any or all of that for the next two year budget because that was projected to be part of the that's correct yeah, the implications of this for the 10-11 budget, given how close we are to the end of fiscal year 09, um, is that we're going to have to work with the legislature to work through an approach on how we can close this budget hole, as well as uh, move the budget through the remainder of its process in the Senate. What other options do you have besides using the rainy day fund? Obviously, it could plug this projected six to nine hundred million dollars. If you didn't do that, what else could you recommend as budget director to the governor? Um, well, uh, let me give you a sense of what's, you know, what's left, right? So um, agencies at this point in time, there's about three point eight billion dollars left in spending uh, for agencies through the end of the fiscal year, of which 3.5 billion dollars is fairly fixed. It's debt service payments, lease payments, subsidies to local government, tax relief payments, school district payments, Medicaid provider payments. So the reality is at this point in the fiscal year, there really is not much room for us to reduce expenditures. Through the executive order and the rather exceptional move we made to ask agencies to issue stop work orders on all contracts um, that are not vital to the health, safety, and welfare of Ohioans, we have attempted to begin to, to stop spending on those discretionary portions of the budget as best we can. Director, not only are you probably not going to have the rainy, day, the rainy day fund, but um, obviously, you say you're working on new forecasts for the, the upcoming two-year budget. Are you are you issuing yet any any warnings to the to the Senate at this point, saying, look, you, you might not want to spend everything that you've got right now. There's going to be there's def we're expecting at least this much less in our forecast. Is there at least a minimal number yet that you're going to, to tell them? Um, we're not. We're not done, as I indicated. We're just starting the reforecasting. I mean, the filing season closed, what, five days ago? Right. So the filing season closed five days ago. We're just starting the reforecasting process, um, which will take us a couple of weeks, um, because we, we run through a fairly extensive process to assure our results are as reliable as they can be under the circumstances. Um, we have been in conversations, the governor has been in conversations with both the Senate president and the speaker and has pledged to work with them to resolve this problem. 
when you did the survey of the other states, did they give you any kind of indication of what they're doing to close these gaps? Uh, no, because uh, the survey was really a technical survey of you know people at the at the research level in the, in the various tax agencies. So those aren't the folks that make decisions about how to deal with shortfalls. That's the same Harry, um, yes. the, the, the House, when they passed the budget, relied on numbers from legislative staff that were even rosier than the ones that, uh, that you were projecting at that point. Was that a mistake? It's amazing to think that someone's telling me I'm being rosy in my forecast <laughs> these days. Um, uh, well, the reality is there are plenty of, uh, there's plenty of variation in how economists have been looking at um, what's before us. Um, and I think this chart really shows you the wide variation in what's going on. You know, the reality is prediction is a very hard science to excel in. And that's certainly, I think, what we're watching happen right here today. Uh, so we're just going to have to take a look at the evidence before us and figure out how to solve the problem together. Very well.